Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing I can say when it comes to this game is that this was a blatant robbery. Manchester United came into this game, sucked for 90 minutes, and ended up stealing their way into a victory. And of course, people are going to talk about the victory, the three points, how great that is. But if you look beneath the, the result of today, you look beyond this result, and you see how poor we played, how easy they played us, and how just how bad we were, then you would have a total totally different understanding of this game. What's up everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show. Welcome back to another video. Today is a Manchester United versus Brighton 3-2 match uh, reaction video and I know that we've won the game and I should be positive, should be dancing, having a great time because Manchester United got their first victory. But unfortunately, that performance was absolutely dreadful and it sucked the life out of this victory for Manchester United. Yes, there was controversy. Yes, we probably should have drawn that game. We probably would have lost this game if we didn't have a 10 out of 10 performance from the post. But regardless of that, we have a lot to talk about because this was one of the worst performances I've seen at a Manchester United in eight years that we've had um, past Sir Alex Ferguson. This performance right here in a victory we, 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 have to, we can't forget about that. We ended up winning this game, but we had one of the worst performances I've ever seen from Manchester United. So, let's get started. Of course, controversy is the only way we were going to win this game. Because in reality, if the post was not our friend today, we would have conceded more than five goals in this game. We were so terrible defensively. And our fullbacks, I'm going to give a special attention to for that. Because in reality, both our centre-backs were not the issue today, in my opinion. The two fullbacks were absolutely instrumental to why we played so badly today. Absolutely mugged off with that defense. And I'm gonna not going to lie, that entire team was fucking shit. And yes, I swore. And I don't usually swear when it comes to Manchester United. But you cannot tell me, when you looked at that game, that you saw anything positive coming out of it except for Marcus Rashford. Literally, no positives whatsoever from that game. We were the, we are the biggest thieves in the Premier League at the moment. We're, we, we earned our three points off of their terrible performance in the, in their defense. Brighton weren't great today. Yeah, they played some good football. They played us off the park. But in reality, we were, if we were at our best, we would have destroyed these guys. But of course, we're not at our best. And Manchester United, again, and the fans have to watch through this disgrace of a performance that we've seen for two weeks. And we're supposed to be happy because we got three points and we scored a penalty. Oh. I'm sorry, did I say penalty? Oh, the rival fans are coming in. Let's talk about the penalty. Of course, we got a penalty. And yes, they got a penalty as well. And both penalties were rightfully deserved. And yeah, it's a stupid penalty that they gave, they gave to us. I'm not going to lie. It was after the play. And that guy should is the... the I, I, I don't know who he is. I can't remember who conceded the penalty. But literally, the biggest idiot I've ever seen trying to guard it like this. Look, we... Won this game off of a stupid play from a from the opposition team. And sometimes you have to take those on the chin. As a Brighton player, you have to take that on the chin. As a Man United fan and Man United players, you're going to celebrate that victory, even if it's not deserved. But in the end, that's a stupid, stupid, stupid foul. And same with the on the other end when it came to uh, Brighton's penalty as well. What is Bruno Fernandes doing? He could have left him. Left, leave him, man. He is nowhere near in a dangerous position. Luke Shaw had that position covered. Cheap penalty. And of course, they scored from that as well. And they mugged off David De Gea while doing it. So in the end, this this game was so shit. This was so shit. And... Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna reflect it in my player ratings. Not a lot of players are gonna get good ratings. Some of them are gonna get average. I don't think the entire team was terrible today, but overall, as a team effort, this was one of the worst performances I've seen. And so many people just absolutely mugged us off, both with Brighton and Manchester United, and they deserve to be called out. In all honesty, in all honesty. I want you to leave a comment below. Did you think that was a good performance? And I want to know why. I want to know your reasons why Manchester United had a good performance today. Because overall, after watching that first half, especially that first half, I saw no effort whatsoever. We forgot how to press. We forgot how to cross. We forgot how to make runs. We did everything wrong in the first half. And in the second half, we got lucky with a counter-attack to end up sealing the deal for us. Bruno's fantastic set-piece play is what kept us in this game. And of course, a penalty. We did nothing besides those three things. Literally nothing. And I'm going to talk about it. Let's start off with David De Gea. In my opinion, David De Gea 
it's a seven out of ten. He in in this in the situation where we could have been down three to one at the time or three two at that time. Guess who was there to save us? It was David De Gea. Yes, the shot was directly at him, but at the end of the day, he saved us from get from losing this game. Beyond what could have been a, a draw, but in definitely a loss, we could have lost this game if David De Gea didn't make that save. So I'm giving him a seven. He's one of the only players. He could potentially be the man of the match. I truly don't know who I'm giving man of the match to, but I'm definitely going to say David De Gea is in in is one of the candidates for that because literally everybody else on at the front of the, in front of him, so many people let us down and. The next one is going to be another one. Aaron Wambasaka, in my opinion, gets a 2 out of 10. What the hell is he think he's doing not leaving the far post open? For 90% of the game, that, that far post was left wide open. If you're a fullback, you need to guard everybody. You need to guard the people that are coming into your box from your side. And cutting in to be the third centre back is one of the worst tactics I've ever seen from Manchester United. I truly don't think Aaron Wembasaka is doing this on his own. I think the tactic is when there's people in the box, try and create in a three centre back type environment. And you left the far post open so many times. But Aaron Wembasaka, at the end of the day, if that performance reflected over. What he probably thinks is the best thing to do? No, I really think that's a tactic that Oli has set out. And so many times, we could have scored easily, easily conceded three goals, four goals, if the, if the people that were shooting from the far post actually had an idea of how to shoot a, a goal. Because every time, it kicked over. And literally... If that was any other team, if that was Liverpool, if that was Arsenal, that was Chelsea, if that was Man City, if that was Tottenham, if that was Everton, if that was literally anybody else that had a clear idea of how to score, then we would have conceded four goals from the exact same play every single time. So Aaron Wabasaka, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's your fault or Ollie's fault, but that's a two out of ten. It's extremely shit. Extremely dreadful. And it's it, it's not hard to figure out, is it? When you watch that game back, and Ollie's going to have to watch this game back because we got Brighton next. Congratulations, we got Brighton twice in a row. When we, when we play them next, they're going to do the exact same thing. We need to learn from this. And it's, it's a dreadful performance. I, I just can't say anything about it. It was so bad. And I'm, I'm done talking about it because literally it gives me a headache just thinking about how bad Aaron Wabasaka was today and how bad our, our defending in the box was. Let's move on. Victor Lindelof. In my opinion, Victor Lindelof, out of all the defenders, was the best one. And at the end of the day, I'm going to stand by my decision by saying that Victor Lindelof should not have played. He should not have played. We are rewarding mediocrity in this club. When Victor Lindelof had such a terrible performance against Crystal Palace, we rewarded him with a start against Brighton. That should never, ever happen. But the fact that it happens is something that I'm going to have to deal with on my own time because I truly, and I still believe it now, Victor Lindelof should not have played. But of course, he was the best centre-back out, out of the two and he was our best defender by far. In my opinion, Victor Lindelof was a 6 out of 10. It could have been seven, but at the end of the day, we could see the two goals. So I'm not giving anybody a seven in that in the centre-back and defending department, except for David De Gea. No one else is getting a seven. Victor Lindelof was a six out of ten. He was in the right place at the right time. He defended a lot of shots. In the end, there were still suspect moments, and he definitely chose safety over risk. As most of the times he had the ball, he decided to clear it to make sure there were no mistakes on his part. And that's something I truly respect, because when you're not in form, you have to do what's necessary for Manchester United. You keep that ball out anytime you feel it's necessary and in the end that's what he did and I have to give him respect for that obviously it's not his time to go and do five star skill moves and take on the entire forward line you have to do what is best and sometimes safety is the only thing that matters for Manchester United especially when Brighton were pressing the hell out of us and we just seem to forget how to press or even bring energy into the game so he gets a 6 out of 10. Harry Maguire, in my opinion, gets a 5 out of 10. I understand he scored a goal. It's technically an own goal. And if, I don't know if it was given an own goal or a Harry Maguire goal. But regardless of that, he was he, Harry Maguire was part of that goal. And also, he was part of the penalty at the final moments of the game. So in reality, he had a big impact on this game. However... He just wasn't great today, in my opinion. And yes, he wasn't that terrible compared to Victor, compared to uh, Warren Bissaka. And when we'll talk about Luke Shaw, I'll talk about it as well. But in the end, in the end, when it comes to defending, 
How did we concede two goals? How did so many open shots in the box end up going through? How did Brighton hit the post four times? You have to look at that defense. Yes, on the end of it, I gave Victor Lindelof a six, and I think he deserved that six. But Harry Maguire doesn't deserve that six. At the end of the day, we cannot accept how we escaped this win. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer must be happy that we got the victory. It's three points at the end of the day. Those three points could be very important. And whether it's a win or a draw, whatever it is, we need the points. We, we will need the points. And maybe in a few weeks' time, no one's going to remember this performance. But now, at this time, four, four crossbar shots. I think it was five, actually. Five shots that hit the post and went out. That's unacceptable, whether it's, it, and it's definitely the defender's fault. This is a big issue now. This is an issue that cannot be ignored. And we're going to have to wait and see how Man United deal with this because we're not getting a centre-back. We're not getting a centre-back. We're not going to get a defender. We might get Alex Tellers. Alex Tellers will not fix that issue. Alex Tellers is more of an attacking left-back than he is a defending one. And we've already seen how shocking our defence was with our full-backs today. So in reality... It's, a, it's not going to fix anything that we have going for Manchester United at the moment. Let's talk about Luke Shaw. In my opinion, Luke Shaw was a 4 out of 10. And he, here's the reason why. Because in reality, in reality, if Luke Shaw didn't create two of the free kicks that led to goal-scoring opportunities, and one of them actually turned out to be a goal, then Luke Shaw would have got a 2 out of 10 from me. Because he got beaten so easily. So many crosses. You notice how the far post was always open. Which side of the ball was crossed? Which side did they cross that ball into? That was Luke Shaw's side. The crosses should not be going in in the first place. And we let so many crosses into the box from that left-hand side. And Luke Shaw needs to be culpable for that. At the end of the day, I could defend Luke Shaw's attacking display because I think Luke Shaw attacking-wise was good. And that's why he gets a four and not a two. But in reality... He was poor today, as was most of our defense. And he deserves just as much recognition, deserves just as much blame as Aaron Wambasaka defensively. It's as simple as that. The only difference between Wambasaka and Luke Shaw today was that Luke Shaw created a free kick for a goal scoring opportunity and also created another free kick which led to nothing at, at the end of it. That's the only reason why Luke Shaw gets a four and Aaron Wambasaka gets a two. Let's move on. Let's move on. Nemanja Matic. I completely, I didn't know, I did not notice Nemanja Matic at all today. Really, I didn't. And at the end of the day, we lost that midfield battle. So I'm not sure what to give Nemanja Matic, but just for safety, I'm not going to give anybody, I'm not going to give them a good score because we lost that midfield battle. We were outplayed, we were out attacked. And at the end of the day, the Nemanja Matic is meant to be the one that defends these centre backs. And overall, I don't think he had a great game if I didn't notice him. And we're out here conceding four um, post shots to Manchester. United creating one opportunity. So I'm going to give Nemanja Matic a five. I'm not going to give him any lower than that because I can't specifically give you a reason why he was poor, but I just think he was. It's as simple as that. I don't have a reason. I really don't, but I'm not going to give someone an average score if we're in the end when we need a CDM and we're talking about Scott McTominay not playing at CDM. We're talking about Nemanja Matic should be starting. In reality, I did not... Attacking-wise, Brighton were better than Crystal Palace. They were. The only difference is they didn't score their goals. I don't know what to say. And you can't give Nemanja Matic a good score for that. So I think a 5 out of 10 is fair. Paul Pogba, I'm also going to give a 5 out of 10. I don't think Paul Pogba was as bad as people will say he was today. Of course, he made very obvious turnovers. And he doesn't look fit. But reality... He was not great today either. I can't say he had an average performance because in the end, he didn't have an average performance. He was below average. Not by much, but definitely was below average. His presence today was, was non-existent as well. At the end of the day, Paul Pogba, if he's not fit, don't play him. We had Van de Beek on this bench. We bought him for a reason. Pogba did not look fit. Walking off that pitch, he looked tired, he looked knackered, and he looked frustrated. And I don't know if Paul Pogba's fit or not, but he doesn't look fit to me. And until someone comes out and tells me, or Paul Pogba comes out and says that he's fit, I don't think we should be playing him until he's fully fit. The dude just had a, a, a virus well before, right before the start of this season. So there's no way that he's had the proper amount of training as everybody else. We need to take things like this into consideration when we pick our team. And that's a big mistake. And I think that Oli's at fault for that. We shouldn't be playing Paul Pogba. We just shouldn't be. Van der Beek, we bought him for a reason. Play him if Paul Pogba's not fit. And uh, Paul Pogba, yeah, gets a five. Uh, Bruno Fernandes. 
In my opinion, Bruno Fernandes is one of the contenders for man of the match. Yes, was he was he bad today? Overall, I think genuinely, yeah, I would say he was bad today. But at the end of the day, he created every single opportunity at goal today. So I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 because he created the free kick. The free kick to Matic who got the assist to Harry Maguire or the own goal. In reality, Bruno was the one that set it up with a world-class free kick take that ended up to the far post. That was beautifully designed and he gets recognition. He also got an assist for Marcus Rashford's goal. In the end, we played a counter-attacking game for that second goal. And yes, Marcus Rashford dropped every single defender. And he absolutely showed his class with that goal. But in reality, Bruno Fernandes was the one that got the assist. He was the one that created that Marcus Rashford goal. Not many players would make that pass. And Bruno Fernandes did it. And of course, if you want to talk about the third goal, it was a penalty. He scores penalties. It's as simple as that. There's no real reason for me to go beyond the, the status quo here. Bruno Fernandes scores penalties. It's as simple as that. I haven't seen him miss one at Manchester United yet. And when he was built, when he was walking up for this one, I felt like he wasn't going to miss this one either. It was written in the stars, really. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, he's contention for the man of the match. And I'll have to wait and see what I give everybody else. I've come into this video blind because seriously, so many terrible performances. Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood, I think was not the worst player on the pitch today, but I don't think he helped his performance as well. In the end, Mason Greenwood was really non-impactive in this game. Yes, he made some good runs. He's a good. He, he loves to turn with the ball. He ran into space. But at the end of the day, I didn't notice Mason Greenwood as a good performer today or even an average performer today. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to give Mason Greenwood a five because in reality, he was just not good. He was not good. Yes, he had a few shots on goal. Yes, a few deflections here and there. But in the end, the only real highlight play he had was Marcus Rashford's offside goal. In reality, he did not do anything in this game. And that's a bit harsh. I will, I, I, granted, it is harsh. But at the end of the day, Manchester United have right now have delivered two of the worst performances at the beginning of the season I've ever seen. And I have every right to be harsh. Yes, he didn't play great. I don't think the rating 5 out of 10 is harsh, but maybe my words for him are harsh. We need better from Mason Greenwood. We need better decision-making from Mason Greenwood. Not everything is going to be a shot on goal. Play the right ball. Make the right decision. Not every decision is going to be a shot. Of course, strikers' instincts will take over, but we need to overcome these instincts. We need to play the right ball. I don't know. I really don't know what to say about Mason Greenwood. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to say he's a terrible player or anything like that. But in the end, he made some questionable decisions today, and that needs to be reflected in his player ratings. Marcus Rashford. He scored two goals. One of them was offside and the other one was pure class. But in the end, besides that goal, what exactly did Marcus Rashford do today? And he looked sharp. In front of goal, he's looked sharp. And I'm going to give him a six because in the end, that goal was class. That goal was class. But overall, did Marcus Rashford have a great game? I don't think he did. I'm giving him a six because he scored a goal. That's basically it. Otherwise, he belongs right where everybody else belongs as a very poor performer today. I, I, I really i am proud of Marcus Rashford's goal, however. I must say that. Out of the positive of this game, the only positive I could say is that I'm happy that Marcus Rashford scored a goal because that goal looked like the goal that we saw a few months back when he dropped his defenders and he scored. We need this Marcus Rashford. I don't care if he has 10 turnovers. I don't care if he commits 10 fouls. At the end of the day, that is the type of goal and the type of talent and the type of skill that we're going to need at Manchester United and from him if we're going to become anything successful. And in my opinion, he's a big reason why we got this win today because that goal, he it was, it was basically 4-1. and one. And yes, only one defender did come at him, but he dropped that defender twice. It's a world-class goal and it needs to be treated as such. But overall, he did not have that great of a game. So a 6 out of 10, in my opinion, is fair. Moving on to Anthony Martial. Anthony Martial, I'm giving him a 3 out of 10. Not good at all. And uh, look, usually even when Martial doesn't contribute in goals, there's always another element of his game that he's contributing in. However, today was one of his worst performances I've seen out of two years, possibly even his entire career. He turned the ball over with every single pass that he made. Every single time he had an opportunity to score a goal, his first touch failed him. When when it comes to build up, he was not there. When it comes to receiving the ball, he was not there. When it comes to pressing, he was not there. At the end of the day, the pressing starts from the front. Mar Anthony Martial, Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood needs to start the press. And not once did I see Martial press today. 
So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I can't defend Martial's performance today. I love Martial. We all love Martial. A lot of people will give him the respect he deserves, and I do think he'll have a good season for us. However, these past two games have not been his best, and this game specifically stands out as one of his worst. And I can't, I can't give someone a good score when I know that this was one of their worst games that they played and one of the worst games I've seen him play. Martial will know this man. He will know this. It's not the end of the world. This, at the end of the day, it's, it, it, it is what it is, man. But maybe if we're talking about Victor Lindelof being dropped and we're talking about all these other players getting dropped, but maybe Martial should get dropped. And I, I, but the, the thing is, we don't have anybody that can, that can take his place at the moment. We don't. Egalo is, is not trusted and he's 10 times worse, in my opinion, than Martial at the moment. He couldn't even def uh, score against Luton Town. He couldn't do anything against Luton Town. So we, we need to keep with Martial. We need to stick with him because at the end of the day, we don't have anybody that can play that position. So when push comes to shove, this team, if I had the opportunity, if we had the squad depth that Oli keeps um, saying that we need to succeed, then I would say drop a bunch of these players because they were not great at all. But unfortunately, we don't have that type of luxury. We don't have a team like Man City where you could basically take off their entire starting 11 and their whole starting 11 could still win the league for them. We don't have that luxury. So now we have to wait and see how Manchester United can perform next week in the Premier League, because honestly, the Brighton EFL Cup game, I couldn't give two shits if we lose that game. But in reality, the next Premier League game is going to be a big one for us, because this game was a robbery. We did not deserve this win. And I don't care what anybody says. If I'm negative, I have the right to be negative, because this was terrible. And I just... I... Look, the three points are important, and I'll take those three points any day of the week. By hook or by crook, we, des we, we should get these three points. We should beat Brighton. But I should... I should not be happy with this game. I should not be happy with mediocrity. I should not be happy with scraping by a final decision from VAR to get this win. We should not be that team that has to beg and plead for a handball with the 94th, 95th minute of the game to get the win. We should not be that team and that should not be accepted. When, when, they, when they celebrated that win... Honestly, I thought Bruno should have not celebrated. I thought Matic should have not celebrated. Because in the end, they know well and truly they didn't deserve that win either. And overall, here we are with three points in the bag. We kick off our Premier League season. Even in a terrible performance, we got the win. So I'm going to just say we're going to have to wait and see for the next game. That's all I can say. I'm not going to go trash talking every single player saying that they're dreadful, that they're bad and that they're not good enough. But at the end of the day, this was not a reflection of the Manchester United that I want to see this season. Otherwise, we're going to be doomed. We're going to be absolutely doomed. Step up, fight, show some aggression, actually press and play the way that we should be playing. Not like this. Not like this. Anyway, we'll move on to the bench. I'll go through the bench real quick. Van de Beek, 6 out of 10. Really didn't have anything to do. Eric Barley came on. Didn't do anything. 6 out of 10. Um, Fred came on. Didn't do anything. 6 out of 10. And I think that's it. That's it. That's that's it. And we even tried to play defensive as well. We are very lucky we got this win. I almost forgot. Ollie's team selection... It's a 2 out of 10. Because yes, maybe the starting lineup was the right starting lineup. But the tactics of this game and the pressing of this game. And the way that we actually came into this game looking to, de to basically defend and not do anything in terms of attack was not great. And I think Oli was hard done by by his players in all honesty. But it is what it is. We move on. And um, the team performance was 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 just was the 4, 3. 3 out of 10. Anyway... That's going to be the end. We've got Brighton in the EFL Cup. I will be doing a match predictions for that. And um, we're going to wait and see. Uh, have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.